I don't know. Maybe we have to cut this or put it at the end. I don't know. All right. It takes a little bit of explaining. Okay. So are either of you familiar with the websites The Ringer or Grantland or the person Bill Simmons? No. He's a sports yes. blogger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The Ringer I'm aware of. Mostly yeah. about basketball. Yeah. But, you know, this is definitely baseball. not my area, but yeah, okay. go on. Oh, he, wait. I have my, 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 my basketball tidbit of information that I found out yesterday. Go, go for it. Uh, I found we'll, out that ta- we'll, we'll take this loose. It's, yeah, yeah, a, it's yeah. an open-ended Okay, uh, Vince Carter experience. played for the Suns for 51 games, and I did not know that until he retired yesterday. <laughs> or no, he got elected to the Hall of Fame yesterday. That's what Makes it was. Sense. No, he retired. Oh, he did? Yeah. Okay, then yeah. He was yeah. playing for a long time. Um, but yeah, I just saw the Suns post a photo of him. Like, this, like, did they just Photoshop it? Be like, oh yeah, Vince Carter, like you're the man. And it's like, Oh shit! No, he played for the Suns for fifty-one games. <laughs> there are some amazing uh, graphics of. I mean, everyone's struggling right now with no sports on TV. But the the teams will just like tweet graphics of like like their players, and they'd be like, "They have a coronavirus," but they're doing like cool like baseball. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, number fifty-two, like infected. <laughs> I'm serious. This is, uh, oh no. Okay, so now. I could speak for hours about the cultural, the cultural political significance of Grantland and the Ringer for okay. the United States in the years between approximately 2010 to 2016. Okay. Um, I will give you a couple tidbits. Everything changed 2016. The t- well, the true. The true. I'm sure you're all aware of Pod Save America, the podcast. It originally started as Keeping It 1600. Yes. Which debuted on the Ringer. Ah. That's how they got their start. All right. Um, Holy shit! This yeah. does does come full circle now. Okay, this is gonna be the, like knowing Rob is gonna. Oh be no! Some yeah, I was about to say fucking <laughs> Rob connected to Jeffrey I mean, Epstein. Maybe I, I wouldn't be surprised. If it was <laughs> Rob Epstein shit. Everyone, everyone making there's people making fun of Bill Simmons by po- just posting a photo of him with um, Jared from Subway. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like kind of smiling together, like. Uh, and Greenland, there's a lot there. It's, it was an it was very 2014, 2012, 2020, 2012 to 2014 encapsulation of like liberal america when they're like we got to uh use data to analyze basketball games and also more black actors should be nominated at the oscars like right. it was a very interesting distillation of the yeah the moment this is the extent of politics there exactly is yeah. um okay all of that is to say that they're still doing this shit and bill simmons is under a lot of fire now for just being for a few reasons one because um the website he runs the ringer it talks about basketball and football a lot, but it has very few black writers, almost no black editors. And I mean, it's about talks about basketball, basketball culture, and everything like that. And football um, is also like and football too. But like his thing is like number one is basketball. Yeah. Um, and so the the they unionized. Oh yeah. I don't know if they've been recognized, but you see them. I follow them on Twitter. There's just. They're like, hey, this is kind of ridiculous because he has kind of a lot of clout. He sold the ringer to Spotify for for two hundred million dollars earlier this year, I think, or late last year. And their big push is on podcasts, and all the podcasts are basically like the editors. Like, I mean, it's it's the equivalent of like, yeah, you, you're you're you know trying to make it in journalism, and you can write a couple things, and you can guest on the podcast for clout. But the people who actually run the podcast on this website are all the you know yeah not the, yeah the management. Not only that, Bill Simmons gives podcasts to like. All of his friends and family. Yeah. His daughter, his fourteen-year-old daughter, has a Sick. podcast. I like, I his like friends this, I have like, podcasts. I like this podcasting nepotism. <laughs> oh, thing, no, that's a, extreme. A podcasting thing that you nepotism. can make yourself, but yeah. I mean, the just thing, for clarity purposes, I'm friends with no one on this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this was a merit-based decision. The thing is, I mean, that it 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 captures like the absurdity of it so well because if you just had your own, like if Joe Rogan like had an extended podcast network of his friends and family, you'd be like, all right, like. You're just some guy, but like wasn't you, that what TYT kind of was for a little <laughs> bit? <laughs> like, but oh, but yeah, and again with TYT. But you can't just have that. You also be like, yeah, but I have this like reserve army of like uh, you know blogger slaves. To, oh like, damn, you mean to, to like, like turn like, out himbos content. like Hassan Piker? That'd be actually cool. Who then all become really communist when they just radicalize. <laughs> but like, you know what I mean? Like they can't just have their little podcast network. They also have to have the, have this website like generating the content and stuff, yeah. and then they get no credit. Okay. The producer for the Bill Simmons podcast yeah. is his nephew. He's yeah. referred to as Nephew Kyle. Uh, Kyle Simmons. He is from New York, but Bill Simmons is from Boston. Ooh. He makes this very, very clear. Okay. Uh, to be clear, for longtime listeners of the show, they will know that the Boston mythos is defined by the suburbs of Boston, which is where Bill Simmons grew up, yeah. and in Connecticut, where he moved when he was in high school. Yes. Bill Simmons' dad was actually the superintendent of the school of the town next to the one I grew up in. Uh-huh. 
Anyway, this is going to lead to like Kyle. one time Kyle pushed me down. No, the nephew Kyle. I've never met him. Sat. I've, I've, no, no. I've met nephew Kyle. If you know what I mean. <laughs> I, anyway, there's a lot of nephew Kyle. Okay, <laughs> he is a SoundCloud rapper. Oh Ooh. yes. Oh okay. He released a song two weeks ago. So with. Like in the afterlives, no. He in the didn't, afterlives, he didn't release the song. He in the afterlives, he didn't do a cover of, the, of what song of is that? The, what? No, the, the the song that you're that that dude that you went to university with. No, no. Ah, oh, fuck. That'd in be the so afterlives cool. of the uprising in in the U.S., uh, we've kind of touched it on the, on this a bit. There have been several. There's always a give and take of like what political forms unrest will take. Like yeah. statues themselves are like kind of a compromise, kind of a transformation of the protest because police repression and it's a mass movement hasn't been built and what forms of these take yeah. another form it's taking is agitating for like in the new york times and uh, there you know there, there were these protests by journalists within their own companies for more representation and mm. more you know just stop doing racist shit yeah um and so the ringer too there, it kind of you know came up again and the union was pushing for more um yeah um to to just have more of a say in things uh nephew kyle released a diss track oh. against the ringer union oh on his soundcloud uh-huh it is called state of the union oh it is a mob beat and mob deep beat uh-huh and it opens with a monologue from lewis black talking about economics <laughs> <laughs> saying like these motherfuckers don't understand economics oh uh, what <laughs> I don't know if we can include any of this on the podcast. I just had to tell the story. No, this is, no, brilliant. This is brilliant. We, we can fuck? we can cut in a little bit of it. Um, he has great lines like "Keep it popping no, like Desert I don't, Storm." I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it popping like a fucking. I don't know a, what that means. A military uh, like thing that lasted for like what? To be three clear, weeks? to be clear, the lyrics aren't about the union, but it's called "State of the Union," and it has the Lewis Black. Yeah, it, it, it's it's state of in the way that Irish people say it. it's like a little yeah, state of that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, yeah. I'm not gonna put Irish any of that song in here because <laughs> the way that he sounds, is that he would find it and sue us. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to say that usually our theme song is "New Dawn" by Melody Brains. It's a bop, and you should listen to it on Spotify. Now it's State anyway. of the Union. Now it's State of the Union for today <laughs> by Nephew Kyle. <laughs> In the same breath, trying to get these pods out. Lately, been a couple fans when I pop out. I don't want a handout. Motherfucker, lock out. I'd say I'm doing pretty good for a drop out. <laughs> that, I'm just reading some lyrics. From I know. Songs. <laughs> Wait, first off, he rapped about podcasting, which is cool. <laughs> yeah, dude, he's a podcaster. He's a podcast producer for his uncle. <laughs> yeah. That's what I think of when I think my nephew's made it. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey. Welcome to your weekly Corner Spatey. Uh, it's myself, Nick, joined with Rob. Hello. And Kieran. Keep everything that we just recorded. Keep no, it all. <laughs> and uh, Yulia cannot be with us this week. Uh, we got, uh, I think we're, you know, going back home this, this week, you know, talking primarily just about Germany, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Tell the world I'm coming home. Yeah. Yeah. Um, West Virginia. Yeah, yep. exactly. Ger- I was singing the Germany. Diddy song. Well, I mix both of them. Remix. It's a mashup of Diddy and whatever the fucking whoever sings that other song. Uh, yeah, but since Kieran's brain and my brain are completely fried, uh, this is gonna be a Rob episode. This is like Rob's um, guiding us. I will use a, a, a like a club slash festival metaphor. Mm. Is that there's like a there's like a chill out tent when you guys are like fucking strung out. You know, yeah. You, you're taking. You took. Fake, fake, fake ketamine. Yep. Yeah. The fake and then you're ketamine. like, Damn. you're a little tired for seeing Tom, Tom Shady up in stage. <laughs> <laughs> you got it's hot. You got to go to like the cool tent. Yeah. yeah. And you sit down. I give you some warm tea. And I play. I do very calming things. You give me warm <laughs> tea when I'm fucking sweating, but you monster. <laughs> well, it's cool. It's cool in the tent. So yeah. the warm tea is okay. I'm just yeah. So we got kind of I, I, like it is just kind of like a German grab bag because it just seems like that. Then like obviously the world's ending as we've all come to terms with. Mm. I think at this point, um, Germany has been faced with a crisis of on like every aspect politically right now. Like not in anything like bad. Like you know recessions coming. Whatever. Just like petty bitchiness. All over mm. the board, and I don't really know how to describe it any other way. So there's been like weird riots that then have just like kind of popped up. Um, there's been 
Uh, yeah, this is just kind of like a little taster for everyone. Uh, there's been then like the the in, in the, the 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 interior minister suing a newspaper. Nice. Uh, somehow, I just saw breaking news on the way here that he is not suing. Okay, king shit. But, well, he but was thinking a, about it. Exactly. You know? I mean, king move. Like, that, the, I'll the, fucking do it. The point. Yeah, exactly. The point wasn't to actually sue this tots op-ed writer. Yeah, yeah. It well, was to just we're, be like, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, um, it's a threat. Uh, are we going to talk about also too how like uh, our our you know man boy of a, a favorite character on the show Philip Amtois just is like I know this happened like last <laughs> I week. I have nothing prepared on that. No, sure. there's nothing really prepared to it, but it's just that then like um, you know surprise, speak, speak surprise. Your piece. Speak your piece while I while I pull up. Okay, uh, well then I guess we're going to start with that. So probably like one of like my favorite things of the last two weeks has yeah. been that uh, which is really not in any way surprising or controversial is that it just turned out that Philip Amtois was just like lobbying for an American like data company or something like that. that. Nice. Which, you know, um, I like how he's like he's staying true to his, his true self of being 57 and 25 at the same time. Of that turtle, like, return to life yeah, yeah. by a witch's curse. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, where he's doing, you know, old man shit lobbying for, uh, you know, a shell uh, uh, data collection company or the like data part, intelligence. Yeah, the young part is yeah, the yeah. data. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then if you go on the fucking website, I think it's called like Amicus or something like that was the company. I can't remember. <laughs> um but it, they don't, like, I could not decipher what they do. <laughs> you know, everyone has their own, like, every, everyone's at, been asked the question, like, if you had three wishes, if there was a genie, what would you wish for? Mm. Or maybe, like, a deal with the devil. But yeah, then I want to be an adult and a child at the same time. <laughs> One, boom, done. <laughs> well, like, I don't know. Philip Amtor, maybe because he cares about his country, he wants, you know, military contracts. And he's like, it's okay if I look yeah. like a... Uh, <laughs> Do you know what Germany needs? More U.S. military bases in it. <laughs> yeah. But the funniest thing about it is that then, like, so everyone was kind of calling him to, to step down, mm. which was, um, yeah, I mean... Uh, nice if it happened. Nice if it happened. It wouldn't really make a fucking difference because there is, like, a secret, like, factory that just pumps these people, like, Philip Yeah, he, he's definitely not, like, the worst CDU member. He's just the funniest looking. <laughs> uh, he's pretty bad. I'm just, like, yeah. wondering, like, what will his final form be in, like... You know, ten years down there, because he was going to be in Parliament for a long time. I cannot stress enough how this man has a face that it's impossible to imagine how it will age. Like, there's, I don't understand yeah. where it's going to go. I have no idea either. I'm, I, I'm also very intrigued of what it's going to go out. But I don't really know what that means. I don't know what it means either. <laughs> this is the word that's coming to my mind. Um, but the best part about it was that them. At least to me, what the best part was because it's like I, I I do just kind of think that this was just like a controversy, just like to take up a little bit of news space for the week because it wasn't really like all that much really happening. I think in terms of like you know the mid the the, the midweek lull that you get in the news cycle and whatnot, yeah. and then boom, I'm tour. Everyone kind of ran with it for like two or three days. But my favorite was that he got the fucking you know nod of approval from mm. my um you know hero um. <laughs> Wolfgang Schäuble nice. <laughs> saw that like yeah there's nothing wrong with what Amtor did like you know he's just keeping it keeping it real keeping it classic CDU style like yeah. you know gotta, gotta start them young you know gotta start them at the ripe age of you know the combined whatever is like 57 and 24 at the same time <laughs> so, so Amtor is like he's, he's young he's ambitious you know he's trying to make it in, this, in this world and Schäuble is like the like the mafia guy or, or gangster who like went legal and he's like yeah you think that's real power but then once you know once you do this shit once it's all like political and legal mm-hmm. it's like that's real power you can just call it Schwarzenegger and you get away with whatever you yeah. want <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> oh no Wolfgang Schäuble is easily probably the most evil person of the CDU and the fact that he's just so well respected within that party just proves to you how garbage they are did you ever see that photo of like the the finance not the finance amp but the uh, I think finance ministerium or something the the finance ministry or whatever the, on his last day all like all made of zero like hell with yeah, their bodies? Did. Hell yeah, they did. For his last day. Yeah. His, that's like, like that's the fucking equivalent of like a uh, uh, a military flyover. Yeah. For, you know, healthcare workers in the United States that, is like, like we're going we're going to contort the bodies of your employees in the There was, a, there was a, actually uh, Kieran, There was nothing Schwartz about it. It was actually a coincidence. Um that's actually the typical it was the summer solstice that's the typical midsummer festival uh, in Germany. Yeah. You contort, you line up, uh, you get six people and they make a zero. 
and then you light them on fire. Uh, to <laughs> and they're they're all they're all Southern Europeans. <laughs> they're all Greeks. <laughs> to to renew your commitment to yeah. shots yeah. and yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, it's the fucking thing of uh, you guys have read the, the the short story, the lottery, right? Yeah, like that yeah. thing that then like there's that South Park episode of it or whatever. Um, they pick uh, all the you know all 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 the the, the local Greek Geralds are rounded up and they're they're put into this this lottery mm. to then be sacrificed for a good you know uh, um, whatever the equivalent of you know. Spagla harvest in like the next few years is going to be <laughs> just potatoes. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah it, it comes from an ancient German tradition of just finding the six swarthiest people in yeah, the village. Yeah, our, our six Greek Geralds, which we have to save. Yeah, none of them were actually Greek or Italian or anything, but you know, when the mob says you're Italian, you're Italian, time to die. Yeah, exactly. The one so. thing uh, that with Amtor, and I know I shouldn't police memes. But the whole online thing that he's like, he's like, we don't do he's no actually, way. he's actually, they make him like, oh, what if he was like a rapper? And I've been like, wait, what? There's like all these means because he looks like a dork. And it's like, well, what if he was actually, you know, it's, it's of a piece with those, uh, there's like stickers in the UK where they'll make, what's his face? Jacob Rees-Mogg with like what face tattoos. What if Jacob Rees-Mogg was yeah. a rapper? Yeah, exactly. What if Jacob Rees Mogg was a driller? And then, <laughs> there's the Amtor version. I love this new just... season of Black Mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. <laughs> but the Amtor version, there's just like, I don't know. Like, you got him, dude. He's just, but he's still going to get away with it. This just seems know? like a, the political equivalent of those t shirts that's like E.T., but with a doobie in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Timmy Turner with like a fucking gat, and he's also yeah. he's he, yeah he's also uh, like. Um, I'm sorry, I'm just imagining what Jacob Rees Mogg would, would, would like, like standing over like Spago like seasonal harvesters. What is actually with, with this bitch um, on his arm? Tough Timmy Turner <laughs> uh, merchandise because like I guess I missed the boat. Like I watched a little bit of Fairly Odd Parents, but this was like the age Kieran was at, mm. being like. I'm going to be an animator. This is research. I'm not too old for cartoons. Yeah. Um, it, is a, it is a psychosexual identification with the babysitter Vicky. Oh, this is terrible. <laughs> I hate this. No, move on. I hate this. Yeah. Uh, okay. So um, let's start with some good news. That wasn't good news. Like, you know. <laughs> um, shout, out, shout out to our boy. Philip Amthor. Philip Amthor. Shout that out that to our boy, uh, Vladimir Ulrich. I don't know how to say his name, actually. Lenin. Who uh, a new statue of him was just put up in Gelsenkirchen, despite Hell objections yeah. from the city government, the AfD, uh, and their good friends, the FDP. Oh, good. So I love um, that. I love that brown, brown, blue. Bro, love the, that. Wait, brown and yellow. Wait, what color is the FDP? They always if it comes the out color. that They're color. Yellow. You have yeah, to see a doctor. Yeah. <laughs> I love they pissing. I love, I love pissing and shitting at the same time. <laughs> So much more of it. Dust is practice. Shit. Yeah. I mean, you do piss every time you take a dump. So this is at least you know bi- bi- biology is is against Lenin apparently. Um, so this was done by our good friends at the MLPD, the Marxist Leninist Party of Germany. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they it is the 150th anniversary of something Lenin's birth, maybe. Yeah, something like that. Uh, yeah. Just let him be in cool. <laughs> There's always fifty years of that. You don't need a you don't need a reason to celebrate. Um, so, by the way, his middle name is Ulyanov. I forgot to correct you about that. I didn't want to, but it was it's been bugging me in the back of my head. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so um, they raised the money to put it on private property. Sorry, last fr- name, whatever. The MLPD raised uh, money to mm. put it up on private property in front of their offices in Gelsenkirchen. And yeah. like the Lenin statue in Seattle, this is perfectly legal, um, that did not stop several um, groups and also the city council from trying to block it. Um, the city had argued, for example, that Lenin's effigy would spoil the heritage value of an adjacent former communal spakas, a savings bank building. In the 260,000 population <laughs> city, we have to protect the Spakas. <laughs> what is that's not even like a that's not even like a reason. Like uh, I'd be so fucking pissed off if a tour group taught me to a fucking Spakas. <laughs> it's historically important for some reason. Look at this. Look at this fucking savings but no, bank. But pu- like 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 literally, it's a public savings bank. I think Lenin would be perfectly cool with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like the German Spakas system is like one of the early attempts at this like weird like combined like socialism uh, uh, capitalism like welfare state thing that Germany kind of invented. Yeah, they were really trying to push for that in California like to have yeah, a similar yeah. model. Yeah. They um, judges about. dismissed that um, complaint. Um, they several said, they said they said Lenin Lenin pimp and they just left the ruling at that. Several politicians including Marco Bushman who is an FDP 
politician, was critical of the plan, calling Lenin, saying Lenin stands for mass murder and totalitarianism. Uh, anyone who wants to erect a Lenin statue should ask themselves whether they are grounded in liberal democratic principles or not. No, no, no they no, aren't. That's why? the point. <laughs> like, <laughs> boo, nerd. <Okay. laughs> so, boo. <laughs> like, literally, like, I mean, like, okay, I, I get that, like, the FTP is dumb as fucking rocks, but, like, literally, like, one of, like, Lenin's easiest critiques to understand is his critique of bourgeois democracy. And, like, you're the fucking party of that. So it's like, yes, Lenin's against that. Like, I just like the FTP being like, I'm starting to think the Marxist Leninist Party of Germany is not <laughs> liberal, you guys. <laughs> I don't know how to handle this. Yeah, I, the fucking FTP sucks so much, dude. Like, <laughs> honestly, know. they care the most about statues and stuff like this. At, at least, I mean, in these kind of conversations, like oh, their oh, I, their role in the, I mean, in and of themselves, like their platform, like of course they want to do a lot of evil shit. But in the like constellation, like the amount of power they have in relation to the other mm-hmm. parties, like their thing is like, I'm gonna go ham on those statues. So, yeah, right. Not in the good way though, where they're just a ripped up yeah, statue. Not in a good way. I love how the Deutsche Welle was like, in a time that many are tearing down statues, the MLPD wants to put up a controversial statue. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, there's no comparison between Lenin, ultimate pimp, and like, you know, a uh, lonely Confederate soldier number 572,324. Yeah. The, uh, uh, the uh, I'm not sure you were here or you weren't here for this episode. I'm not sure if you listened to it, but our new uh, theory on um, Corner Spatey that Christian Lindner is actually like the Oracle of Delphi and just has like these weird fever dreams that actually predict the future. <laughs> I heard you guys talking about this because so, yeah. like a year ago he did start rambling about Spargle and the Chinese. That's true. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. And now look at us. Yeah. Mm. Oh God. He talks a lot about um, Mallorca. Oh. Eyes, keep an eye on my order. <laughs> For <a> years time. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, this um, is like Christian Lindner, Corner Spatey Bingo. You need the fucking Christian Lindner expansion to play <laughs> Corner Spatey Bingo now. <laughs> Just to, to round this out, I want to read from the Chapo Trap House Reddit. Oh, um, no, this is cursed already. There's a post <laughs> from a user, Chinks to Drugs. Okay. That is uh, like the rapper, Chinks. Okay, not Unless anyone is. <laughs> Chinese people. <laughs> It's a rapper. Uh, I was at the unveiling last Saturday. Been meaning to post this. Uh, some fun facts. The statue was crowdfunded by the Marxist Leninist Party of Germany for Lenin's 150th birthday and overshot its goal. They're planning to put up a Marx statue because they have extra funds. Huh. The local government tried to shut them down with lawsuits, wasting a couple thousand euros of taxpayer money. Turnout for the unveiling was expected to be around 300, but ultimately 1,100 people came. Nice. This is the very first Lenin statue ever in West Germany and the first one put up on German soil since 1985. The city launched a petition hoping to show that the people don't want the statue. Only 200 people signed it. <laughs> Desperately, uh, the off day and the FDP organized counter protests. 13 to 16 people came to the off day. Nice. 7 to 10 people came to the FDP. Protest. Damn that. The <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh my God. User um, uh, um, Chinks to Drugs concludes probably the most based event I've ever attended. Thank you. Thank you to our <laughs> to our Reddit correspondent. So yeah, statues maybe they can be good sometimes. I mean, I don't care one way or the other. I just think it's really okay. So Gelsenkirchen, for people who don't know, is like an, like the reason that the MLPD comes from Gelsenkirchen is because um, they are an incredibly like industrial. Uh, space in Germany, space up uh, town in Germany. Like I hate oh, I just used to use the word space. Fucking cancel me. I'm done. I'm quitting the podcast. I'm going to go start my you know body and bodies and spaces uh, corner spatey uh, uh, spinoff. Voices is the new one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't noticed, but okay. it's about voices. But um, bodies yeah, and voices. So uh, um, I don't I. I would like to know who votes for the FDP. Like, if one, it doesn't surprise me actually that the no one like came from the FDP in Gelsenkirchen because they maybe get like that many people to vote for them because it's like an entire like post-industrial town. The AFD one surprises me though because like the AFD normally has like really good pull in these like NFV or like uh, North North Rhine Westphalia. I yeah. think is the English name, right? Yeah, it's um, a name. yeah, yeah. So these these like post-industrial spots of of indu- like of of uh, along the Rhine. And uh, uh, and like Wilkebeet and whatnot, so that one surprised me. Like, cool that then the MLPD is. Maybe, uh, you know, there's been a lot of conversation of like, how can you you know bring these you know wh- how can you bring the like off day voters back into the like left statue of Lenin? They just wanted statues yeah, of yeah. Lenin. They're like, <laughs> how many times do we have to ask you? We just want <laughs> yeah. clear representation. Of the Bolshevik, yeah, and to be very line. fair, like to be very fair, like I know that then a lot of people in Germany talk shit on the MLPD because they are a little bit extreme. Uh, they're just kind of like wacky old people who, for like, 
I would say 95% of their politics are good. The other 5% are kind of questionable. Mm. Um, but nonetheless, like, they are one of the very few parties that then just, like, goes to, like, workers themselves and, like, not through the, like, social democratic unions to then, like, try to, like, you know, spread their message and whatnot, which is, like, respectable and cool. And I can at least, like, appreciate them that there, there is, like, this political force of the left, mm. given there's a lot of controversy with them in terms of, like, how one how extreme they are they're like notor like they're notorious for like calling the cops on people for whatever reason but i don't know oh. how much to like believe in that because it's always kind of like people just like blame the mlpd for anything that they don't like um they're mostly just old people and like uh kurdish immigrants right. yeah, i like, yeah. i just like how the criticism of mlpd is very similar to like Emma Goldman's criticism of the Soviet Union. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they keep calling the cops on me. Yeah, yeah. They're definitely, uh, they're, they're definitely, uh, 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 like the thing I will say is that they are a part, like a, they're a political party of another era that never existed in West Germany. Mm. So it's not even like that you can like use like the like Ostagi argument for them. It's just like they really like Marxism Leninism. <laughs> And, like, are unable to then understand that then, like, there's a way of doing this, like, a similar type of politic with them, like, not, like, you don't have to, like, just, you know, like, you can still like Lenin, like, I think that we like here on the show. Have that in the back of your mind, but then, like, you don't have to fucking, like, be like, okay, the only way that you'll understand this is if you read the fucking entire, like, Max Engels Vaca and, like, you know, yeah. if you fucking study, you know, imperialism, the final stage of capital or whatever, you know, like, that's not, like, that's not how you're going to get people to be engaged. Oh, you like Lenin? Name all the imperialism you've done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or, like, and I mean, like, to be very fair, too, like, a thing that then's really turned, like, that turns a lot of people off to them is just, like, they will use any account to then just, like, be, like, yeah, Stalin was actually, like, not bad. And it's, like, whatever, like, your opinion of it is in that sense, that's not a way to get a person to, like, no, no, interested no, no. in the left. No. So, Yeah. So, uh, did you hear that, MLPD? We said nice things about you. Please retract your statement that this podcast is run by Titoist spies. <laughs> Stop calling the cops on us. <laughs> yeah. I will never back down from uh, uh, supporting Tito. Um, <laughs> I hate that cop that one time. <laughs> should we talk about Stuttgart? Yeah. You know, let's, uh, we're, we're, we're driving south from, from Gelsenkirchen. Okay. We're hopping on the Autobahn. <laughs> We're hopping on that, road on that trip. privatized uh, rail, maybe 80 euros for a ticket from Gelsenkirchen to Stuttgart. But I can watch the animals of Farthing Wood on this streaming service that's <laughs> yeah. only available can on the train Wi Fi. All right, so we're going to do a, a Rashomon style uh, recounting of I don't Stuttgart. Know what that means, but okay. It means that we're all sharing our individual stories about what happened. Okay, cool. So. I once got a job offer in Stuttgart to work for a board game company. I didn't take it. Really? What yeah. what, what kind of board games they make? I fucking don't know. I had to learn German. Schwarzenoel. Spetspiel. <laughs> <laughs> the game is trying to build a city without spending money. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot take on any extra debt, you fucking coward. <laughs> Oh, that has to exist. That has to, like, I'm just going to make that as a joke, actually. Fuck it. <laughs> Schwarzenoel board game. So... It started, uh, I'm gonna make this. I believe, with a riot uh, sometime last week yeah. on the uh, streets of Stuttgart. So basically, what, what I heard happened was that there was a police, like a drug control. Basically, police were controlling people. Mm. And there were maybe like 100, maybe 200, mostly kids, young people on the streets. Um, there's no clear explanation for why that control turned into like a riot, but basically seemed, I would say it makes a lot of sense if they, the police were just doing something racist, if they were being violent, you know what I mean? Like, mm. fuck you. Maybe people are already drinking, smoking, or whatever. They're like, yeah, <laughs> we're, we're in the mood to do this. Uh, we've been watching TV. Um, and basically they uh, kind of smashed some windows and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I think they burned burned a car or two. Classic. Normal, normal riot stuff. Yeah. So... Um, and then that's it. I remember actually quite clearly before all the shit blew up that they Literally. said, I remember reading that they said specifically there's nothing political about this. And to me, that was almost like thou doth protest a bit too much. Like you don't mm -hmm. want anything political to be a part of this. I mean, I mean, I don't want to ascribe or impose motivations on anybody, but like it seems quick to judge. Yeah. Because then like a day later, they're like, Actually, this is the the tots <laughs> like like <laughs> uh, fucking migrant uh, cabal that's like controlling our society and yeah. that is like the gravest danger to the the precious um, German culture that we hold so dear. Um, I don't know how to quite how to reconstruct this uh, this piecing together of events. Mm. 
um, but I'll take a shot. So what do I have notes here? Um, the they kind of like reconstructed the scene. So apparently they took the the the, the burned out car away. And when Horst Zihofer, the interior minister, came yeah. to like survey the damage, they like brought the car back <laughs> to be like, yeah, like like they kind of like made it be like, look at this like terror scene. So, <laughs> um, they uh, look at this pol- beautiful guy. <laughs> police were on the were picked up on the scanner saying about um, how dangerous all these K words are, and we have to do something. Um, K word is to what? Is like, anyone of like migrant background? Ah, okay, cool. And some point, I, I think it was slightly before this, mm. um, and I don't think I think everyone's aware of the context that there are uprisings, maybe slowing down a little bit, but ongoing in the U.S. Yeah. and in many other countries around the world. And well, they're all they're they're all they're all going to be over because uh, Bill De Blasio said he's going to put a uh, Black Lives Matter statue somewhere. Like that's what they wanted, right? They were tearing no, no, down. No, 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 this- no, not anywhere. Across the street from Across Trump the... Tower. Oh, oh yeah, true. Fuck, I forgot the last Fucking part. Yeah. Owned, dude. Because that's what they're that that's what they're protesting about is Trump. Like this is the, like oh god, I can't even fucking get into the U.S. right now. Okay. No, no, no. Keep, keep, keep going. So keep going. there was uh, in 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 light of these, uh, yeah, in light of the ongoing uprisings, there been, there's been a lot of commentary in Germany and in Europe about you mm. know what it might mean, what role the police have in society. There was one Tots article from an op-ed writer mm-hmm. titled. All cops are berufsunfähig. Yeah. Which I think bastards is a little more succinct. I don't know why I have to say berufsunfähig, but you know, yeah, what, so un- to like, each their like, own. Uh, they're, they're unqualified for their job is what it means. Ah. All of our and it was just listeners. saying like they're angry, they can't do anything, might as well throw them in the trash, basically. Um, I believe that was released before the... Uh, yeah, it was, like, it was on the 19th. Yeah. So before, I mean, in the context of the uprisings, and then 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 there was this riot in Stuttgart. At some point, I'm sh- maybe listeners can fill in when exactly this happened. The narrative shift where they're just like, this fucking Tots article unleashed this like <laughs> fucking youth migrant violence, yeah, and yeah, that yeah. we need to take, we need like fucking martial law to like lock down and make sure that like this doesn't spread. I feel like it was very sudden because I do remember seeing some stuff about this the Stuttgart happening and then all of a sudden everyone's talking about tats and i'm like all right this is new so just a few hits um yeah horsey hofer threatened to sue this person um yeah. who wrote the article tagesschau did a whole ju- they just talked about tats basically the whole time when they talked about stuttgart it's a newspaper <laughs> and the kids are calling it tats <laughs> Yeah, um, and the thing I just I find that's just so funny of that then like because people think of Tots as like this radical left wing paper that then oh. so crazy, but Tots is like just like you you get your your step into the game at Tots before you start working at Bild or Die Welt. Yeah, like they're not left wing. I think that like they're like a left liberal paper. It's German Guardian. It's German Guardian. They're yeah. they maybe were good like ten years ago or whatever, but they've been like infil- maybe they're not even infiltrated, but they're incredibly anti Deutsch. Who the article that I'm not going to mention her name because yeah. I liked I'd, it better. I liked it club. better in the past when they had blackface photos of. Uh, um, Obama. <laughs> oh, oh my God! Fuck! I forgot about that. Yeah, so Tats has always been this like just very weird. Um, yeah, like I'm just gonna go out and say it. Like they're they're just like they're really good at pretending that they're left wing, but they're 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 quite reactionary yeah. a lot of the times. Um, actual good left wing journalism in Germany is like not this paper. Let's just say that mm. they have. Um, yeah, so then the idea then was that then... But what's better as a boogeyman for the, for what's the whole <laughs> Yeah, no, and, but the thing is is that then because they like are like somewhat like... They're not even anti-capitalist, but they're critical of capitalism in yeah. like some of their stuff and whatnot. Um, yeah, like I said, they, they, they are kind of the stepping stone for if you want to get into like the normal liberal media, you know, but like you're young, you don't know what to do. They're you're SPD work, friendly yeah, yeah. paper as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. But, but it, to me, it's a hilarious reaction to the... Again, it can be one or the other. This wasn't political at all, or this is like fucking like lockdown. We need to like all hands on deck yeah. to control this outburst because th- the subtext is: are the ongoing riots in the U.S. and, and to what extent this will affect or like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know spark something in Germany? And they can't like in, in the same way that most societies and most co- I mean the countries we're talking about can't actually like deal with any conversation about the police like it's a third rail that like yeah gets at the foundations of society and the violence underpins it and how this fuck it's like it's like the the like 
calling it a thread, I, I don't want to downplay the like severity of the violence, but it's like it's all just up to the police <laughs> to like hold this <laughs> shit together, you know? Like yeah. there's not a lot of like institutions and services that are I mean, there's still some, but they're fewer and fewer all the time. So it's just like hey, we just gotta pay some people to crack some heads and fucking, you know, abduct and kill people every yeah. once in a while to like that's kind of what's really <laughs> holding this together. It's the only thing we haven't sold to Virgin Media yet, so it's the yeah. only yeah. it's the only lever we can pull. And so yeah. like uh, Eric Prince, CEO of the police. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would oh, say I would no. say that, that there's a long history of like uh, fucking ACAB one three one twelve in Germany and stuff like that. But on a, on a national level, like any, I mean, there's clearly been a little bit of an attempt to try to talk about it or try to you know talk about the narrative or something. Mm. And from what I've seen so far, and again, this is just the right wing, but everyone's kind of falling in line behind what the right wing said. Is nah that we're, we that's not that's yeah. not kosher political talk. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. either not political at all or it's. Fucking existential threat to the existence of our of our of our folk. Yeah, this is the thing that then I fully don't understand is that then like okay, so first off, I we didn't mention this yet though, is that like Tots then went and immediately then like backtracked <laughs> and said that then this is satire, which it's not a like it is I mean, like Germans are not funny, <laughs> but my god, like that is you cannot take that as satirical. Uh, like it's just like it's also just it's, uh, incorrect. Yeah, yeah. Satire implies that they're making fun of no, being no, hysterical it's just, it's about just cops, a, like, oh look how hysterical people are saying cops can't do anything. Yeah, yeah. it's just it's a it's, a it's absurdism. Yeah, it's just it's Fools. a like like on its on its on its face. It's just like it's 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 an opinion column. That is yeah. like that is what it is. And then and more than an opinion column, it's it's just a, a blog post. Yeah, yeah, it's a very Why mediocre not? take on the police. I, I like, like I like reading the fucking David and Anika columns and tots. Like, there's just a bunch of bullshit in there. Yeah. People who read those will know what I'm talking about. Yeah, no, and this and like the way that then that like like I mean not just just not just this piece, but like all of these pieces read is like if you like. This is like maybe a little bit too much German energy, but like you like have that one person like their hobby is like going to demonstrations and this and that and that, and they have not changed their vocabulary since they were thirteen years old. Nice. Like, and it's not it's not read like like it is just not like there's no reason to read it aside from like that you want to like be nice to your friend, you know. But um, yeah, like it's not even like like the piece itself wasn't offensive in any way. It was like I, I mean I'm sorry like like there are for current things about going on about like you know critiques of policing and whatnot. Uh, you could have been way harder and been like way more like open and realistic about it about like what the situation is just like not even just like in Germany but Germany is like is is, is a good example but just like kind of like like Rob was saying like 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 how police and capital are like this interconnected thing like if you can't critique one you can't really critique the other well yeah. so. Um, yeah, but then like, then all these other op-ed writers started coming out and being like, oh, well, you know, it's a problem then that this was seen as like, it wasn't like Fox for Hetzel and whatever that is, but, um, like that, yeah, like you said, like that, that, that Horst Seehofer just like took this as his like, yeah, we're going to like, this is fucking, this is it's crazy. Like it's racist against cops. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah, against, against blue lives. Person of cop. Yeah. Uh, but then like, yeah, and then you just had like all these like liberal pundits being like, well, we have to protect free speech, but like, you know, cops, you know what, their job's hard. And then I was actually thinking about this the other day is that uh, actually today. Uh, when I saw you them, know how much choreography goes into those TikTok dances, Nick? Their job is hard. Yeah, like uh, <laughs> the Macarena <laughs> is hard to do. Yeah. But um, we were talking. We've talked like kind of briefly. I know. Actually, we haven't ever talked about it about like a world like like w- like police abolition and whatnot. Mm. I didn't realize that Germany has like an example of that with okay. the Ordnungsamt. Well, you don't yeah. you don't like them, but they're also not cops. They can't do anything. You can run away from them legally. Oh, that happens all the time when, yeah, uh, yeah. when they try to stop do- people mm. with dogs off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you have like a method of policing that that is the most like like for just dumb like traffic ticket things. My whatnot. favorite thing about that is they also glamorize them the same to kids the same way they glamorize cops. Yeah, yeah. In my local Vulvets, there is like a toy notepad and pen Ordnungsamt Ordnungsamt thing that you can get for kids yeah and the thing that's so funny about the Ordnungsamt is it like the like they try to make ah. them they try to make them look like the cops yeah but they're not no. like you they, they they can't touch you uh they like they can't arrest you they just give you tickets and shit like that so yeah. it's like i don't know just like a little a little side thing that's is it like yeah yeah i mean like the alternatives are out there. The old Nuxam still kind of sucks because they're annoying, but yeah. they're not going to beat you up and you know kill your dog. 
I would just say that um, I understand and also would offer critical support for all oh, no, slightly of annoying yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. head writers. No, no, no. It's really fucking dumb. Stuff first like of all, you know, we're all podcasters. We know it's hard to get a riff going. Yeah. You got some good content. Sometimes it falls flat. Yeah, yeah. No one deserves to be. <laughs> no one deserves Horsey Hall for threatening to fucking yeah, throw them in jail for it. We post on Twitter. We are uh, posters. You post in Taz. You are long form posters. Mm. Yes. That's what I'm yeah. calling journalists now. <laughs> it's just like a, a, a like a article or just like a lot of tweets in a row. Yeah. Exactly. Damn. That's crazy. You it's are, a thread, if you would. You are. Either a long form poster or my new favorite version of journalists, word cops. Mm. Word cops are bad. The people who are trying to get like the names of and publish like people at BLM protests or like survivors of sexual assault. Mm. Word cops. Fuck off. Yeah. I, I would just add from what I've seen of the um from the Abed columnist, uh Hengame is their name. That they're just kind of like hands off, like, I mean, fuck, I didn't want this. <laughs> like, why, why is everyone mad at me all of a sudden? I think that's the right um, stance to take for, just for the reason that it is the right wing's attempt to try to paint this, like, yeah. black and white picture. That either you're, like, fucking stand up for the cops or you're sp- specifically this cultural niche. And any revitalized left, and it seems like the left is revitalizing itself unevenly across the world, but to yeah. some extent, it is going to be very diverse and complicated and whatever your i don't know you're just a for a political person whatever your like cultural idea of the left is and i'm like this there's there's a million fucking lefts you can be man i mean culturally speaking yeah you know and that's often the terrain this is played on and once you accept that you'll be like oh great i can i can be fucking for police abolition in this way i mean yeah. we agree on the police abolition part and then the rest fucking doesn't matter Have the article, wasn't even, the article wasn't even calling for police abolition which is the craziest thing it was the most such like a lukewarm thing of just like hey like the cops fucking suck at their job which is yeah, like I, which I, is I like a checked, really like the top is, it does say abschaffung der polizei like the like subhead oh the subhead but it doesn't i don't think it actually like no it's like the head the header like above the title like it's a category. That's an oh, edit- that's the like, category. Like what the Daily Beast does, you know. Like yeah. Little- yeah. yeah, but that's like a that's an editorial decision. Yeah, I don't. I don't yeah. think the article. If I remember correctly, the article doesn't really call for it. It's just kind of like a. Um, let me speak to the manager of policing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's basically like y'all hate cops. Like it's 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 vamping a little bit at the beginning of the show. <laughs> so Which who's again, swiping? <laughs> uh, who's on the long live posting, everybody? <laughs> Fuck Horsey Hofa. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sem- yeah. Semper post. Is that, is that what it is? It's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck it. <laughs> Who's going to stop me? See over. <laughs> yeah, dude. The fucking Ordnungsamt? No. <laughs> you posted it correctly. I'll fucking run away from the Ordnungsamt. Can't catch me. No, 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 no. Hiding no, no. all the replies. All right. From the... Wait, wait, wait. Uh, I, saw, the I, saw, I, saw a video, I saw a video of them, like, like uh, French protesters knocking down a, uh, a smart car and, like, using it as a barricade. And they're like, oh, yeah. are these French police cards? Um, no, those aren't. But the Ordnungsamt, for people who do not know, if they've never been to Germany, for like, like, the Ordnungsamt literally just translates as like the, like, the office that keeps order. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But they go around in the most unintimidating fucking squad cars, aka a fucking s- smart 4 2. Yeah. Yeah, you just, you just, when you see them, just give them purple nurples and just like pull up their pants. Be really messy. That's, yeah. that's opposite of Ordnung. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just like fart loudly and then you get a ticket in Austria for that. Yeah. Fun fact, yeah. Yeah. Someone got a 500 euro fine for farting in front of an Austrian officer. Yeah. Someone. A friend. <laughs> friend of the bar. And that man grew up Comrade. to be Karl Marx. <laughs> Karl Marx farted in front of all police yeah. officers. <laughs> And I mean, uh, he did the pull my finger joke. So many cops. That's what happened when they. Tried That's to why shut he had to leave newspaper. Bonn. He, he had to go to farted. Berlin because he was doing too much of the. Like Carl, you can't keep doing the pull my finger joke to cops at the bar. You need to be studying Hegel. <laughs> I guess Hegel's just running back. He was who's swiping. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah I, I would like to return. What I would like to return to on future shows is the growing police abolition, whatever it is. People just being like, "Fuck cops." Uh, there was some stuff in Hamburg with the protests. It's me doing the shoot ago. dance until the cops are gone. I fucking in Hamburg, the police were like they arrested a bunch of kids during the the, the big like George Floyd protests. Yeah, like, yeah. the fifth or sixth of June. Yeah, and they arrested all of them, and then the police like they let them go, and the police went to all their houses to say sorry. 
but like I'm just gonna show up to like intimidate you and be like, sorry. <laughs> gun <laughs> with fucking gun point to the parents. <laughs> I'm fucking sorry. Accept my apology. Uh, and then it was and then it was it was filmed on cop TikTok and then it got fucking just tweeted around Germany being like, Wow, guck mal, wie diese Polizisten das so herzlich und höflich sind. <laughs> I got that. <laughs> they, they, they do be saying that. They yeah. do be saying that. Um, wow. Hashtag. Blaulicht matters. <laughs> Blaulicht matters. <laughs> I was wondering what you, they're, they're actually, that is the hashtag, is yeah, it yeah, not? Yeah, oh, yeah. God. No, um, that's the thing, too, is that then uh, I, I, I was thinking about this topic the other day because we were supposed to talk to about this on um, Not Safe for Wonks was about like German cop shit and whatnot. Oh, like, the hot cops. Hot cops, yeah. Hot cops. And, um, there really is this like bizarre, weird like idea of then like German police. German people take their police much more serious because they've like transformed them into media as like it's a hard job for your brain. Like you got to think mm. a lot. You got to do you know detect like you know like Tatort is never about like boom boom you know shoot him up normal. Co- it's like you know we got to find the right guy. You know yeah. we don't want to be you know and I think that that's like like inherently like just plagued everyone of realizing that then like. Mm, police or shit <laughs> like, yeah i think there's it, it, it german propaganda seems that it, like american propaganda does have like the tv show like cops which is kind yeah. of like about the the brutal you know in the heat of the, moment, the wild kind of, west yeah exactly but it also does have like your ncis mm. bullshit of just like we brained him to jail like the we we, we used our smarts to get him but like i think germany just has all of the the latter where every cop is actually a, te- a hard-boiled detective. There is no, like... Ich bin ein Cop ohne Auswege. <laughs> Does anyone know that ad on Spotify now? Okay, no. whatever. <laughs> oh, actually, yeah, I have heard that one now that you say it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, okay, we're going to end with a brand new segment then, aren't we? New segment? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, cue in the brand new segment music. We got brand, any music? Brand, brand new segment. <laughs> Don't waste your time yeah. on me. It's lit. <laughs> this is, Straight I believe, up. actually, correct me if I'm wrong. I yeah. hope it's a brand new segment. The very first update on Omega Rica. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, this is the second update on Omega Rica. Oh, fuck. Oh, it's first my one? first update on Omega Rica, so it's my brand Didn't new segment. Didn't we have one a couple of weeks ago? About who? No, shit, you're right. Yeah, this is. Okay. Yeah. Brand new segment. <laughs> <laughs> it's lit. <laughs> It is lit. We are talking about a fan favorite of Mega Rica. Oh, yeah. Um, the Skull. The Skull. A.K.A. Vasil Bozkov, mm-hmm. A.K.A. The Richest Man in Bulgaria. Yes. Uh, <laughs> we, did, we, did this, we did this in the episode, our first episode with Milo Edward. It's called Trace Science. Yes. Pause to let everyone go back and listen to that. Yeah, we'll, we'll wait for <laughs> come you. Back, come back an hour and a half later. Yeah. Um, we'll pause silence we, for one and a any, half. Any, uh, any quick summary of who Vassil is? Before he's we just the king of the... fucking... He's just the king of the Balkans. He has a lot of Thracian artifacts. Yeah, yeah, that's how he seems to like... I don't know. What's the opposite of liquidate your assets? To like the, the, ossify. <laughs> yeah, ossify. It's called investments, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that seems to be how... It, money launder. That seems to be how he money laundered because he just... His whole history of being the richest man in Bulgaria, like every other rich person in Bulgaria, is just crime. Mm-hmm. Just like he got there via via crime. No, he got there because he listened to that DJ Khaled song, All I Do Is Win, and it yeah. spoke to him. Nice. So... Vasil Boskov, um, I don't have the timeline right in front of me, but a few months ago, he was a, a, a arrest was put out for him mm-hmm. by the Bulgarian government for being too fucking cool for financial improprieties surrounding the national lottery. Now, the national lottery is actually a private lottery that he runs. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, we ruined Eastern Europe. <laughs> we yeah. just sold it for parts um, <laughs> to criminals. <laughs> Several other people were implicated, but he's the richest. Uh, up to seven hundred million dollars in missing taxes and fees from this lottery that cool, he paid cool, to cool, the cool, government. Cool, cool. Um, I don't know what the push was to crack down. Now, um, one yeah, article yeah. suggested the EU wants the Bulgarian government to crack down. Mm. Um, if you have any leads on this, please let us know. <laughs> the richest man in Bulgaria Takes me all the not, way to the top. <laughs> the the richest way. man in Bulgaria is not someone who works for Bayern Monsanto, and we'd like that to change. <laughs> Um, oh, but this goes way deeper. Yeah. So, um, Boskov has moved or has fled to Dubai, mm-hmm. where he is a basically continuing a social media war against the Bulgarian government. So <laughs> they can't extradite him. He's hiding out in Dubai. Nice. 
and posting a lot. Yes. Um, oh he, God! So you're telling me that he's 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 Bulgarian John McAfee? He is Bulgarian. John oh, McAfee, so cool! More more successful, I guess. This rules. Um, so this is gonna uh, links in the show notes because you really have to see this to understand what's going on. <laughs> um, his medium of choice. We we've been talking about posting mediums. Some yeah, people yeah, got yeah, op-eds. Yeah. Some people got tweets. Um, He's, I don't think he's doing them himself. Uh, he's posting cartoons. Oh. Portraying himself as Ali Baba, the Arabian Nights character. Nice. Um, is that, and, it is a crime in Dubai. Apparently. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, <laughs> this gets into dodgy territory very quickly, I'm sure. For, uh, he's a, a risque very, guy. Uh, I, I, I doubt he's a very woke Bulgarian. <laughs> um, I don't know the, the, the details of the story of the Arabian Nights. A woke Nights. Bulgarian is someone who just like kind of thinks that the I'm, Roma I'm going to pass around people. my phone so my co-host can see what these uh, cartoons look like. Maybe Kieran Kier- is, is our uh, graphic expert here. I um, saw it for a split second. It was, it was bad. Do, do you have any comments on, on the, the, the stylings, maybe? All right. Ooh, um, I, I feel like anyone who possibly is familiar with like early 2000s, late 90s um, French political satire... Like my favorite, yeah. Like a lot of thin lines. Great, of, great era for political satire. Yeah, 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 political satire cartoons. A lot of thin lines, a lot of like filled paint, a lot of like squinting at it for thirty minutes because you don't understand French and you are almost certain it's anti-Semitic. You don't understand Bulgarian, nor can you read Cyrillic. So yeah, I'm pretty sure it's anti. I just don't like the spider <laughs> with the face on it. That doesn't seem kosher. So from what I got from our wonderful source, which is literally Radio for Europe, the website, <laughs> you can see. Ah, uh, yes, the EU does want them gone. <laughs> <laughs> They've been. Um, he he portrayed himself as basically like just finding a secret stash of treasure that like basically had been stolen, oh, he's and so that he's cool. just some like. Kind of poor, yeah, farmer. He's, or, yeah, he's he's uh, the Nicholas Cage of. Yeah, exactly. Of, he's just some like down on his luck guy who found this treasure and using the treasure built up an even bigger source of treasure. And now the corrupt, you know, thieves and robbers want to take it back from him. Yeah. Um, I, basically, maybe the most incisive part of his comics is that he's implicating and calling out specific people in the government who he says he's worked with. Oh, um, no for shit. example. Oh, so you, you mean to tell me he's he's the Takashi Six Nine of <laughs> fucking Bulgaria? He's going to tear down the nation state of Bulgaria next week. It's just going to be South Romania and Western Macedonia. <laughs> yeah, I you know I, I I hate it because I was a I was a big fan of his first few songs. <laughs> for example, let me. Uh, so for example, I'm reading from again our friends at Radio Free Europe. Yeah, uh, also sponsor this podcast. Uh, <laughs> quote. He, uh, Boskov, accused Prime Minister Boy, uh, Boyko Borisov and Finance Minister Vladislav Goronov from the ruling coalition led by the conservative GERB party, G-E-R-B, I love GERB. <laughs> of, asking, GERB. Um, of asking Boskov for a 20% cut in his lottery business, Bulgaria's largest, in exchange for favorable legislation, a charge he alluded to in the cartoon. <laughs> nice. Nice. Boskov also uh, posted a helpful infographic on Facebook explaining his cartoons, which I like, you know, always <laughs> good to have an explainer. <laughs> I like the Ben Garrison energy that's going with that too. Yeah, so um, I mean that's basically the gist of it. The best part is that recently, so basically at the beginning of June this month is when he started posting these. Mm. Um, shout out to my roommate who just got back from Bulgaria, and she was like, "Yeah, everyone's talking about this." <laughs> um, the latest news that I have of him, this is from Monday, June fifteenth, is and this is the headline: Fugitive Bulgarian Tycoon says he will launch a political movement. Of course, yes. This yes. is what this was building to, of course. Yep. I was about to say he must be gearing up to run for president. Boskov 63, who was nicknamed the Skull and is now based in Dubai, said he would start a movement called, quote, Bulgarian Summer. After 64% of over 70,000 people like said... like a really bad Avicii song or something like that. <laughs> You've heard of Hot Girl Summer. <laughs> now get ready for Bulgarian, Bulgarian Summer. summer. <laughs> Feel the heat of an open roast lamb in a field while you're shit-faced on Rakia. <laughs> <laughs> Pass out from dehydration as the local farmer's kid pisses on your unconscious body. Your, your cousin slips you fake LSD. <laughs> <laughs> and then all vote for your favorite richest criminal. <laughs> I mean, this country's a sham. 
It has good prospects. Apparently, 64% of people in an online God poll said they would back the Bulgarian summer. <laughs> would you call it that? Of course you would. What do you want? Like, like I like summer. I like going to the beach. <laughs> Vote for summer. <laughs> Uh, it, he and his movement would target corrupt politicians and officials in Bulgaria, which remains dogged by graft and poverty what more a than a decade genius, after joining though, because the European every other, Union. Every time we talk about like a political movement or like a or like a revolution or whatever, it's always just like a, it's always a, a time of the year that, like no one likes. You know. Yeah. Uh, okay, spring. I personally don't like it. Allergies, whatever. Yeah. Bad, you know, bad connotation in my brain. What was it? There's also then like German, German. What is it? German autumn. Yeah. 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 But Bulgarian summer, mm. you're not going to say that you hate Bulgarian summer. No. Yeah. Like, I mean, king. People like people envision Eastern Europe as this like one gray block of just like overcast winters. But no, Bulgaria is in the south. It's like borders Greece. It's, it's got some nice beaches. Bulgarian summer, baby. Yeah. Boskov promises. Eat that lamb's face. <laughs> Boskov promises that uh, UK stag parties will return to Bulgaria. <laughs> I mean, uptake of 400,000%. The good times will roll. We will stop corruption. I also promise that every fucking garbage mega landlord Irish politician can have a house on the fucking Borgos <laughs> coast. I mean, this is a phenomenon we talked about a lot on the show, which is that he's like, uh, much like maybe the, the top mobster or something who yeah. talks about... I'm all about loyalty and family and respect. They're the first ones to flip to the FBI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, yeah. And so he's like, hey, I mean, it's basically, I, I don't want to, I don't want to belabor the, the point, but it's, it's Trump's argument. He's like, hey, they're all crooks. Why not get the best crook in charge? Yeah. And so, I mean, and there is like, there is like, I think people don't understand this within like the European uh, uh, discourse is that like Eastern Europeans like Trump a lot. Man. Like there is, um, they think he's cool. They like yeah. how he. They like well, I mean, his relationship to sex. It's really normal. I think it's just like no, but it, like it genuinely comes from like the sense of like this like post Soviet mentality of just like, yeah, like that that they kind of just like accept that then like everything's like corrupt and everything's this and everything's that. So you can't like, not after like the nineties in Russia. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, well, why not just get the you know get the fucking MVP of corruption? Yeah, get the crook who's on my side. Yeah, yeah. In, in, in a very specific way. It's more woke than the liberals, right? In a very specific. It's like, just like on hey, the nose. At like, least, yeah, at yeah. least I'm a, like, at least I'm aware of the, yeah, this yeah. fucking game. Well, this is the thing that I've always said about like American. Okay, sorry to, to bring up the U.S., but like like American conservatives, I have far more respect for than American liberals because they're just like on the nose. They want fascism, and they're open about it. Mm. You know, and it's, I think it's like a similar sense in this is that they they acknowledge that like the corruption is going to benefit X, Y, and Z. Why not then just be like open about it? As in like, well, at least this dude's like saying he's corrupt and he'll like you know help you know, create a Bulgarian summer. <laughs> um, I think it's like a similar vibe, you know, because we're all on vibing here, so. the um, This seems very similar, and I have started gathering notes because I think we need, need to do an episode on them. This seems very similar to Andre Babish, the, oh, the Czech prime minister. Yeah, 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 he had like a similar vibe of just like, hey, I'm rich. Don't, don't you want to be rich? Vote for me. Uh, yeah. I'll let you touch the money. I'll let you touch the money. I'll let yeah. you touch that good, sweet Czech crown. Ah, uh, well, yeah, this rules. <laughs> that, that was our very first uh, installation in uh, the updates on the Mega Rica series. Yeah, more coming soon, I'm sure. Oh, oh, I, I mean, we still have to finish the Mega Rica series. We have like 50 left or something like yeah. that. <laughs> we haven't had all of us together in a room for. Such a long time. A very long time. And we haven't had guests on in person in a very long time either. No. And every guest that we've had recently have been serious. So I don't want to like, <laughs> drop a mega reek of like, hey, tell us about the situation that's going on with this. By the way, uh, uh, this, you know... This uh, guy is famous because his dad died. <laughs> it's always fucking that. They have the largest pony collection in northern <laughs> Macedonia. <laughs> I mean, with the, the interview for next week... we. But it might be fun to do Mega Rico with them. <laughs> they can be Already down. did it. I'm sorry. No, we, 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 we can't time. do Mega Rico. Yeah, no. Do Mega Rico in the Greek Parliament. <laughs> yes, that's the fucking goal. Get uh, all right. Uh, any any ideas for what to what kind of a left response is to this political dynamic? Nothing. I got nothing. To the the left response to the Bulgarian is, summer. Leave Bulgaria behind. It is too late. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh. Just. Reunite Thrace. 
<laughs> bring back the Ottoman Empire. Bring back the Ottoman Empire. Yeah, yeah. that's the maybe oh, not the left wing, but this is the ultra Turkish nationalist argument. Mm. Maybe I agree with it. For this once. is the only two political points we've oscillated, like 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 vi- vi- like switch between is just like genuinely good left wing politics or just fuck it, bring back the Ottoman Empire. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just someone, someone sack Vienna, please. Yeah. It's, you know what? 2020 is getting weird. Uh, we talked about last week about how that the, uh, the, uh, uh, um, the foreign minister of, of, of Turkey just already said that like the Greek islands are, don't belong to Greece because yep. they are not on the, on the European shelf. So Bulgaria doesn't belong to Bulgaria anymore because Turkey says so. Like, I love when you use geology to to, to win an argument. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking yeah, like big brain arguments right there. You have to go to college for that one. Yeah. Oh god, but yeah, um, it's gonna. Be, yeah, I don't know. There's no. There's no left in Bulgaria. There's no organized left. No, no. It's, in it's, Bulgaria. it's literally like the the barren political landscape of every single yeah. former Soviet or Soviet satellite state. The Bulgarian left is probably not in Bulgaria anymore. <laughs> they're, they're probably all expats working yeah. in shite jobs in Germany and Italy and shit. Oh, yeah, true. They've, they also have had like a mass exodus as well. Of, yeah. Of, yeah, of, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, what's it called? Brain drain. Brain drain, yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, like the only thing they really still make is like baklava and rose water. What did you just call it? Baklava. Okay, you enunciated the wrong thing, but uh, I forgive you. <laughs> back lever? Yeah. Okay, there you go. <laughs> when I, I pop the pimples on my back, I call that back lava. <laughs> that is a disgusting <laughs> image. <laughs> you brought it up. I just feel that, like, Kieran, because he's Irish, is, like, too used to the saying the word balaclava. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> it's cold outside, and you should murder some Protestants. What do you mean? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess on that note, uh, we will see you all. We ended on a negative note again. No, we did not. No, we, did, we never, we never ended on a negative depressing. note. It was depressing. What's depressing about the, about the skull? There's no political, there's no political hope. Uh, I mean, unless. Well, Gary, of joke, course there the isn't. <laughs> no. All right. What are you like? Oh. Just pointing it out. We could have talked about pedophiles. <laughs> No. Yeah, I want people to come back and listen to this show, not just like end up in a dark cavern that they can never get out of. I love that. Yeah, actually, speaking of pedophiles, I am guaranteed, I guarantee you, Bulgarian summer is not going to, a party run by an exiled billionaire in Dubai is not going to have a decent vetting process for all the like insane politicians that are going to come in so they can run a full election. There's, there's going to be no vetting process. It's just going to be insanity. It's, it's possible this will just become the five star movement of just like some sort of weird tech scam, some people who are genuinely left wing, and then I don't know, some very outdated comedian is involved. Yeah, ultimately shapeless, and then fascism. Yeah, ended on down right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wasn't me. I'm gonna end on a on a on a on a good note though. Uh, uh, hey. Uh, do you like summer? Uh, do you like the Balkans? Of course you do, because those are two things that everyone <laughs> likes. Do you like everyone terrifying loves... YouTube comments. Do you... <laughs> do you like terrifying YouTube comments that just says that like why Serbs and you know Bosnians aren't the, aren't people, <laughs> but that the true Albanian race will be the one that then triumphs over all Balkans? Um, uh, well then, uh, Bulgarian summers for you. What that has to do with Albania? I have no fucking clue. But uh, find out when you come to. Uh, Bulgarian, Bulgarian summer. summer. 2021. 2020, 20, 20, 20, yeah. <laughs> uh, play that Avicii song because it's Bulgaria. They probably still listen to that, even though Avicii's been dead for like two years. He's like an Orthodox saint. <laughs> <laughs> He's Catholic. Yeah, exactly. Avicii. Oh God, imagine it was like a like like uh, uh, have, we, we, we've we've all been in an Orthodox church, right? <laughs> Yeah, you know, that face when. Yeah, that person. face when you look up and you see a shrine that's like 95% gold. Yeah. That's Avicii. <laughs> Patron saint of getting, you know, just getting your bit on a weird night out with a bunch of English women. <sighs> I mean, like, the Greeks did have a saint for wine. I know, a, a god of wine. Why yeah. can't you have a patron saint of, you know, taking too much MDMA and blacking out on the beach? The local farmer kids. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Is well, that a happy note for you? That I, I was about to say that's that's good enough for me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Then uh, on that note, on, on that note. Bulgarian summer, uh, we will we will see you all on the other side. Peace and good vibes, everybody. Yeah. Why is it called Bulgarian? Bye. Long 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 live the eternal reign of the skull. <laughs>